get rid of it and not come back to it. That's the goal. Amen. Don't pick it back up. Don't pack it up in your, in your suitcase. But we're going to have a good time today. I don't have all the luggage up here today, but we had, if you were here last week, we had golf clubs. We had the kids' seats and book bags and all kinds of stuff. And that's really how we travel. We travel with way too much stuff. And uh, I want to get to the point where I can just travel with a book bag. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'm going to go on a week's vacation just with a book bag. It might not work, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? Amen? Let's look at these couple verses of Scripture. Therefore, we are also, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. So there are some things that are not sinful that have weight to it. And there's many sins that obviously have weight to it. Amen. So there's some things you might be carrying around in your life and it might not be sinful, but it's heavy. We're going to talk some about that today. And uh, the sin which easily ensnares us. Easily. So, so, so it's not like that it was this hard process to get you to pick up some heavy things in your life. The devil looks at us and says, that was easy. That was easy to get them to carry those things around. And then the Bible goes on and says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us after we've laid it down. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame he sat down at the right hand of, uh, of the throne of God. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that we feel in this place. And we just pray that you would anoint us and we would receive what thus saith the Lord in this house. God, we need some breakthroughs in our lives. We need revival in our lives. God, we, we need to be overcomers in this place. And we just prayed that you would do it in this house. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. 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 Shake your neighbor's hand. Let them know we're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. We're continuing our series on uncovering some of the heaviest baggage that we carry around and I want to encourage us to make that exchange. Remember when I said that it's, it's just an exchange that's taking place. I have all my junk in my life, and Jesus died on the cross, and he said, just, just give it to me and nail it to the cross. So I exchange all my junk, and I give it to him. And then in return, he gives me life and life more abundantly. He gives me peace. He gives me joy. He gives me all of these different things. I'm telling you, that's a pretty good deal right there. I mean, if you ever wondered about a deal that you need to sign on the dotted line or a deal you need to move forward, that's a deal. Jesus is the best deal for you and your life. Amen? And, and so Jesus offers this, and I want to kind of recap a little bit from last week, but I don't want to get too much into it um, because i got a lot I want to get in today. Uh, but let's, let's look at the definition of what baggage means. What baggage means. It means past experiences it, it doesn't mean this it's 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 not a suitcase it's it's not that that's just an illustration but real baggage is the emotional stuff that we deal with the stuff that's in our minds the stuff that's in our hearts and so this is what the definition is you can look it up this is actually in the dictionary past experiences are long-held ideas regarded as burdens or impediments burdens or impediments and then I looked up that word burden and this is what burden means it's a load typically a heavy one and some of us have been carrying around some heavy stuff for years and years and years and we're tired amen worn out done just ready to give up I came to tell somebody hold on just a little bit longer your breakthroughs on the way if you would just be faithful, if you would just hold on to God and trust that he knows what he's doing, we're going to make an exchange in this place, and we're going to give some stuff up. How many say amen? So, so the good news is God is a heavy load bearer. Heavy load bearer. I remember Michelle used to sing, long as we got King Jesus. Oh, man, we wore that sucker out. Oh, my goodness, did we wear that song out. But I'm telling you, there was an anointing on that song, just like Holy Spirit come. I, I'm, I'm telling her, get it on the set list. I got to hear it again. But, but 
there was a part of that song that says he's a heavy load bearer in other words he can take your heavy load he wants you to give him all your junk and the heavy stuff so that you don't have to carry it around any longer and last week we talked about it and i brought out the the weights and i don't have the weights i'm not doing that again that stuff was heavy but uh we we, we had the weights that were in the luggage and uh we had a couple of things that we were carrying around and we talked about them that that we have in our luggage and um and so rather than have all the weights i'll just remind you what some of those were uh the first one was a fence Remember we talked about the offense, and it was a small weight, you know. Offense, that's, that's not that bad, you know. It doesn't really uh, harm me that much. But then we start getting into uh, unforgiveness. Uh, I got these all taped up, so. There we go. There's our unforgiveness. Then we talked about bitterness, anger, and resentment. And, and we had that all stuffed in there, and, and it was in, in our suitcase, and it made us heavy. We carry those things around. And, but the Bible says we're to cast all of this stuff unto Jesus. Because he cares for us. Cast all of your cares upon the Lord. All the things you worry about that gives you anxiety and keeps you up at night. All this junk. All this stuff that weighs you down and makes you so heavy. And, and the Bible even talks about how we carry this spirit of heaviness upon us. And we're to make that exchange and give him the offense, the anger, the resentment, the unforgiveness, all of that. And, and, and I don't want this stuff in my life any longer. Today is the day that I say, Lord, I'm giving it up. Amen. Would you raise your hands with me right now and say, Lord, I declare it. I'm giving up everything that has harmed me, hurt me, that I resent God. I give it all up. Every ounce of unforgiveness, any resentment, any bitterness right now in Jesus' name. I lay it down because I know it's destroying me I know it's destroying me I know it's harming me I realize I've, that it's not good for my marriage and my family to have all this junk that I carry around all of my life so I need to make the exchange now I want to get into another story in the Bible in Matthew chapter or Mark chapter 10 verses 17 down through 25 and I want to tell you about another story in the Bible, all right? So verse 17 goes like this. And this is, a, this is um, an exchange between Jesus and, and this young ruler. And, and so he has this conversation with this young man, and he says in verse 17, Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? H how do I make myself right with God? How do I become a Christian? So Jesus answered at him, why do you call me good? No one, uh, no one is good but one, and that is God. Can, can you imagine Jesus making that statement? Jesus is perfect. And then verse 19 says, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Oh, you mean the Old Testament commandments we should still be following? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's good to do that. Uh, do not murder. That's probably a pretty good rule right there. Uh, do not steal. Don't bear false witness. Do not defraud. Listen up, young people. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. All the parents said amen. amen. Verse 20 says, and he answered, and, and listen to me. Honor your father and your mother doesn't mean just when you're young. When you're older, you ought to honor them. Because they're still your mom and your dad. You always honor them, no matter what age you are. All right, I don't want to get into that. Verse 20, and he answered and said unto him, Teacher, all these things have I kept from my youth. Check, check, I haven't murdered anybody. I'm not stealing. I'm not, I didn't commit adultery. I didn't bear false witness. Check, 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 check. Doing pretty good, Jesus. Looks like I'm going to get a really good grade on this examination. Check, check, check. All good, all good. He says, I've done that from my youth. Verse 21, then Jesus Listen to this. Looking at him, loved him. See, Jesus loves us enough to tell us when we're wrong. Jesus loves us enough to reveal areas in our lives that need some work. See, I don't, I don't need him to tell me all the good stuff. This guy was telling him all the good stuff. Check, 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 check. Did all the good, good, good. Jesus, I'm not really concerned about that. That's, that's nice. But, but now let me tell you the real deal. All right? I want the real deal, Jesus. And so he says this, he says, Jesus looking at him, he loved him and he said, one 
thing you lack. Wow. Can, can you imagine if, if I took an exam and there were 100 questions on that exam and I got 99 of them right and there was one answer wrong, I'm going home and having a celebration. I got me a 99% on the test and I only got one answer wrong. And, and, and can you imagine only focusing on the one little thing I did wrong versus all the good things that I did right? But does not the Bible says that a little leaven ruins the whole lump? I think that's what it says. You check your Bible, but I'm pretty sure my Bible, that's what it says. Your Bible says the same thing, I think, unless you rip that page out. Because <laughs> that's what people do, eh, Ben? Did you get the redacted version? Did you take a marker and cross out the things you didn't like? Because we got to follow it all. Amen? I know, I know sometimes it makes us a little uncomfortable, but we got to talk about the stuff that's not good in our lives. we got to talk about the things where we've fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? And so, and so we got to open up and, and say, God, you love me enough. Tell me, the, tell me the stuff I need to work on. He says this. Here's the one thing. You ready for this? He says, now go away. Sell whatever you have. Give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come, take up the cross, and follow me. And I imagine he just stood there, and there's a little bit of silence. In verse 22, he says, but he was sad at the word. Does the word of God bother you? Does the word of God make you upset? Because we ought to, we ought to look at the Lord and say, God, I need everything you have in your word. From Genesis to Revelation, I need the word. Does not the Bible say don't take away and don't add to the word, but take it at face value. This is the word of God. I need to hear the word of God. Sometimes the pastor's going to step on my toes. Sometimes, Jesus, you're going to convict me. Sometimes you're going to tell me things I don't like. But we need it, amen. And he told him the hard word. And, and, and so he was sad at the word. He went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He was a rich man. And then verse 23, Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how hard, is it for, uh, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, how hard is it for those that, listen to this, trust in the riches to enter the kingdom of God. They trust in that rich thing. They trust in riches. And verse 25 says, It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Oh, we're going to get into it today. All right, let's talk about this. See, I want to deal with some of those weights that we, we carry around in addition to what we talked about last week. These things are not only weights. These things are not only heavy but they hold us back from becoming what God wants us to become. And, and we carry all of this stuff around, and, and, and we get all loaded up, and we're trying to, trying to do good, trying to be a good husband, trying to be a good spouse, trying to be a good father, and we're carrying all this junk around, and it's hard. Can you imagine if I had to scroll on my iPad right now? I couldn't do it. If, if, I, if I had to play with my kids right now, I don't know how I would do it. If, if I had to counsel someone, you probably don't want me to go in like this, do you? We're trying to live life and do good things, but we're weighted down with so much garbage. And we got to do something about it. Amen? And, and, and so we talked about that last week. And, but it looks silly when I carry all this stuff around. But it looks silly for you to continue to carry those emotional things that you carry around. It's too heavy and it's destroying your life. And a lot of people don't realize, that we talked about this last week, that we have blind spots. And we don't even realize the things that we're carrying around, those heavy things. And, and, and today, I want to talk about another heavy thing that we carry around. And it's another thing that we need to talk about. And it is pride. If you can't see that, it says pride on it. I want to deal with pride and reputation because it's very important. What is pride? Why does it matter? Why are we even talking about pride today? What's this have to do with me? Pride is mentioned 61 times in the Bible. And here's a, a definition for you. 
one of the definitions in the Bible is this. The most common term is geon in the Hebrew, which occurs 23 times in the Bible. And it's in, it includes the ideas of being arrogant. You know anybody like that? Arrogant. Cynical insensitivity to the needs of others. And presumptuous. Well, that really doesn't sound like someone I want to be around. Someone that's prideful. Prideful. And pride grows. And, and the reason why pride grows and, and people become more of those definitions right there is because we crave independence and self-sufficiency. I don't need anybody's help. Yeah, you've been high on drugs for the last 23 years, and you, how's that working out for you? Amen? I don't need any help. You ever watch that intervention show, and they try to intervene, and, and they get to the, to the attic, and, and they say, what, what are you talking about? I don't, have, I don't have a drug problem. Like, you don't even see it. You don't even understand how bad off you are. But, but we want to be self-sufficient. This is, we don't want to depend on other people or other things. We want to be self-sufficient. I can do it all by myself. Where are my men at that like to do projects at home? Amen. Y you, ever, you ever have to, like, screw boards together? or hammer things together or do certain projects at home and no one's around to help you so what do you do you're like you know you're holding on to things and right and you're right mike and, and you're trying to do it and and then, then it falls over on top of you and you're all cut up and you're wore out and and your wife comes home and said what happened honey oh no 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 no, no it's fine because we don't want to ask for help yeah i came into church today and had a couple things that i need to do and i just went to people and said can you do this can you do this? Can you do that? Because I need help. We all need help. But, but listen to this. Pride keeps us from asking for help. But let me say that again. Pride keeps us from asking for help. But, but I want to dive into this because I think it's a little bit funny. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I think it's a little bit funny that, that then when you can't do it, Mr. Prideful Man, when you can't fix it, Mr. Mrs. Prideful Woman, that you run to God for the things you thought you could do by yourself, and then when you make a mess, you got to come to God. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Yes, we do. Yet we are called to depend on God in humility for all things, not, not in arrogance, not in pride, but we humbly come before God every day and say, Lord, I need you. I depend upon you. I can't live without you. And God, I need help in this world. Isaiah 10 and 20 says it like this. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Oh, I want that to be our testimony today. You need to mark this scripture down, take a picture with it, whatever it is. You need to remember this scripture. I will never depend on the one that defeated me. I won't depend on the enemy. I won't depend on this world and the world's systems. I won't even depend on myself because I'll defeat myself. I'll depend on God. Amen. Amen. Depend on God. I don't need to depend on anything else. Do you know you can't breathe without Him? It's in Him that I live. It's in Him that I breathe. When you wake up every morning, I try to do this every morning before I swing my legs over and my feet hit the ground. I say, thank you, Jesus, I'm alive. Amen. Because I could have died through the night or whatever but thank god i have breath in my lungs thank god my heart is pumping today thank god i can see i can feel i can hear god i'm I, i'm nothing without you it's in him that i live it's in him that i breathe it's in him that i exist you're here today because of god amen and the moment that you think you can do this thing on your own pride begins to well up God will take you out because of your pride God will, 
just ask Cora and his family. <laughs> ground opens up, sucks him into the ground, folds back over. <laughs> How'd you like to go like that? What was it, like 250,000 of them? Pride caused them to act the way they acted. Pride caused uh, Miriam to, to, to get frustrated at Moses. Pride. All through the Bible, you see this theme of pride. It ne- let, me, let me just say this for you. It never turns out good. Pride's never good. And, and it takes a life of itself, and it takes over you. And, and look at this, look at this uh, next slide that I, I want you. I heard, I heard this this week. I, I heard it on one of the, the podcasts that I sent over to you, and uh, I just started listening to it. And Michelle's got me turned on to it, and I listened yesterday to the one. And listen to this. Look at this slide right here. Pride hides and covers. Pride hides, hmm, and it covers. Do you remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden? And do you remember what happened? The Bible says they went and hid themselves from God. Now just for a moment, think of the logic there. The all-knowing, the all-seeing God, how do you hide from Him? And they thought they could, but, but, but pride set in, so they tried to, to hide from God. They put on some coverings, and they thought that, that, that they could just hide. And th- listen to this. They thought they could cover it up, and God, God won't even notice. God, God won't even notice what's wrong with us. God won't even, it's fine, let's just hide. That's what pride does. Pride covers and pride hides. Is your life a cover up? I hope not. Is your life a cover up? Is your life a lie? You pulled it over on them, didn't you? Fooled them all. Yeah, I come to church on Sunday. I even give a little bit here and there, and occasionally I raise my hand. I might even pop into men's group and ladies' ministry occasionally just to throw them all off. But I'm going to still do my own thing. Listen, you cannot mix God into your own thing. Listen to me very, very closely. I pray over my vision every day, and one of the things we went through a a prayer study or something a a few years ago, and, and it hit me, not my will but thy will be done. And in the moment where I think it's my will, it's my way, you're in, tr- you're in trouble. Because pride covers and hides. And I, and I'm gonna, I want to just say this. There's a lot of people that they, they got up today, they brushed their teeth, fixed their hair, took a shower, went down to the church house, they put on some nice clothes, they looked presentable, and they came to church, they sat through a service, and they did all the religious types of things, but they're a cover-up, and they're not really saved. And that's a dangerous place to be in, because here's the problem. Yeah, you pulled one over on your wife, you pulled one over on your husband. I'm impressed. You cannot pull it over on God. He sees all. And, 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 and the, the interesting thing about it is this. The interesting thing about it is, Romans, cha- I, I never looked at this like this, Pastor. Romans chapter 4, verse 17 says, and he's speaking about Abraham and how Abraham, this is so powerful. Abraham is to be the father of many nations, right? Father of many nations. And, listen to this. And the, uh, the scripture goes on to say in Romans chapter four, 4, verse 17, it says, and you can call those things that aren't as though they were. You mean I can lie and call those things that aren't? Because I used to always 
look at it like, well, bless God. You know, we call those things that aren't, and we call out the blessings even though they're not there. And that's the, that's the primary meaning of that scripture. But is it possible that some people have called their life something, and it really is? And it's a cover-up, because that's what pride does. Pride is a cover-up. And, and pride, you go do your own thing your own way, on your own terms. And listen, the Bible says, this is so interesting. I've never seen this till this morning. I've never thought about this. Call those things that aren't as though they are. And what will end up happening, Abraham? You're to be the father of many nations. And there's a lineage that you're supposed to follow. And the child's to come between who? You and Sarah, not anybody else. But remember, pride makes you do things your own way. And he goes and has a relationship with another woman and births an Ishmael. And now we're calling those things that aren't as though they are. Here's the promise, child. This is the one, Ishmael. No, it's a lie. And you've got to deal with it. And until you deal with it, listen, you're going to be fighting an Ishmael all your life. It will antagonize you. It'll fight you. It'll bring you down. It'll lie about you. And it will make you do things you never thought were possible till you send that lie away. Isn't that what the Bible says? Pride covers. Pride covers hides lies but the bible says everything that's covered will be what revealed will be uncovered uncovered amen pride covers what's really underneath amen I'm borrow you a second, Lord. You help me out. I don't know. I don't know what's under here. It's shaking. It, see that? It might jump out at you. You okay? You ready? You sure? There could be a wild beast or something under here. You ready? to say that's what's under pride the real thank you no animals came out did they that's all God wants from you see he wants you to come to him in humility as you are not the lie and, and, and until you admit this to yourself, you're never going to get better. But what's the real deal on you? Who are you really? The real you is who you are when you're all by yourself. No one there to watch over you. No one there, no one there to make decisions for you. No one there to judge you. Are you holy then? Are you loving God then? Are you serving God then? Or do you just dress yourself up and come on Sunday and, and look like a Christian, but the real you? Listen, listen to me very closely. God knows the real you. God knows the real you. And what's going to happen is, that, listen to me very, very closely. You need to understand this. The real you is going to sit or be there at the beam a judgment seat of Christ you ever read this in the Bible Th this is Bible and there's a judgment one day that's going to take place and guess what you're not going to be able to cover up the real you you're not going to be able to shove it under the, uh, the thing you're not going to be able to push it under the carpet you're not going to be able to you know, just sweep it across the, the room and hide it behind some furniture because God only wants to know the real you and he's only going to judge the real you. So you might as well do something about it now. Amen, someone. Remember, pride covers and pride hides. And we need to uncover what's really in our lives. What's really in our lives. But we dealt with that last week, so we're okay there. And remember I talked about how we pack things that we really don't need. And, and uh, here I am, I've got... 
I've got 13 pair of shoes for five days of vacation. Remember we talked about that last week? I don't understand why, but but I don't know some of this other stuff. Lint brush, got some toothpaste. What's in my life? Uh-oh. I didn't I didn't know that was there. I didn't realize that I had all this extra stuff. It's all pride. Some of us have a lot of pride in our lives. You can never say you're sorry. You can never come clean about the real you. Oh, you, oh wait, yeah. You do when you get caught. Can never reconcile. Bless God if they don't want to apologize, I'm not going to apologize. God says to always strive to live at peace with all men. Ouch. Woo, it's getting good in here today. <laughs> Pride will keep you from making it right, the things you stole. Pride will ruin your marriage. Pride everywhere. That's a mess, isn't it? If you would have just got rid of some of this pride, wait, forgive me, Lord, all of this pride, if you'd have got rid of all this pride, your life would have turned out a little bit differently. Oh, I know I'm preaching. Because look what Proverbs 16 and 18 says. Pride goes before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit, a haughty spirit before a fall. If you don't deal with all of this stuff that you're carrying around and this pride. Oh, yeah, oh, you, did with the, you did the anger and the resentment. But this, ooh, I'm telling you, this will ruin you. Some of us keep falling because we keep packing the pride in our lives. And for some of it's a blind spot, but for some of us it's not. We know we're prideful. And we refuse to do anything about it. Listen, I tell you, God, God knows how to knock down a prideful person. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, anybody else seen it? I am telling you, I am telling you, I am telling you. I've seen preachers, I've seen businessmen, I've seen actors and athletes, and they're arrogant, and they're so great, and they're so prideful. Nothing can bring me down. Nothing can harm me. I'm doing my own thing. I'm my own king. Look at me. And before you know it, they're cut off cut down brought down that's what god will do if you won't humble yourself god will and i'd rather humble myself the bible says humble what yourself james says don't let god humble you because i tell you it is not going to be good we need to learn how to be humble again amen we need to learn god to take all the pride away from me amen would you raise your hands right now and say that god take all every ounce every part every thought every area of pride away from me amen i need to get rid of it in jesus name i need to reveal myself to me because when you dupe other people that's one thing but when you fool yourself that's a dangerous place to be in how do you reach someone with the salvation message of Jesus when they're lost but they think they're saved? That's tough, isn't it? I mean, they will argue you down to the point, and I'm like, look, bro, brother, you're not even close to being saved. But they don't get it. All right, I, I got to move on. So pride goes before destruction, haughty spirit before the fall. Proverbs chapter uh, 16 verse 18 is a direct opposite of Proverbs 15 33 Proverbs 16 18 talks about pride self-confidence haughtiness which produces that that carelessness in the fall and, the, and, and this is a sliding if you will but uh, Proverbs 15 and 33 I don't have it for up there it says that 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 it's different when I have wisdom and humility and I come before the Lord in humility but there's a lot of people that are prideful and the and it talks about literally sliding or falling there's many people in the body of Christ that are backsliding and they don't even know it can can you imagine 
let me try to get an illustration. <clears throat> Imagine I'm on a cruise ship and I fall off the cruise ship. Neither someone threw me or I jumped. You know, sometimes we don't know in some of these stories. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think they jumped. <laughs> There's blood on the rail and it matches their DNA. I think they were pushed <laughs> off of the cruise ship. Let's just say you fell off <laughs> and you're in the water and people are hollering, man overboard, man overboard. And you're like, no, I'm all good. I'm, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm fine. No, I didn't. That's foolish. I don't, I don't need any help. No, the sharks aren't going to eat me today. <laughs> no, you're 10 miles out away from me. No, I'm, I'm good. I don't need a life vest. I'm fine. Don't need any help. There are a lot of people that are backsliding that, that, that need help, and they don't even realize that they need help. L let me translate uh, Proverbs 16, 18 for you. This is my translation. I don't need any help. I can do this by myself. I got this. And the devil tricks us with a little bit of success and self-reliance. And, and it's almost like a drug that makes us feel good and we need our next hit. Need our next hit. Remember, pride is geon, which means arrogance. It means pomp. It means excellence. It means majesty. It means self-reliance. But it also means swelling. I thought this was interesting. It has a connotation that means in the, in the root word swelling. And my, my mind goes wild when I try to make correlations and connections in the Bible and bring scriptures together and different things, Peter. And I, you know, I just, my mind starts going wild. So I start thinking about, um, I start thinking about Paul on that ship when he was going to Malta and it began to break apart. You remember this? He was a prisoner and uh, they had to grab a hold of pieces of the ship and they floated in on the ship. And the Bible says that the barbarians there made him a fire and uh, they're making him a fire. And so apparently uh, Paul, or, uh, yeah, Paul, he goes and gets some, some wood and he's going to help build the fire. And, and at some point a snake comes out and a snake bites him and hangs on to him. And do you know what the barbarians said? They said, we're going to watch him and see if he swells up and dies. Because we've seen people bitten before. We've seen people with venom in their system. And that's usually what happens. They swell up and they die. Well, this word pride, it, it, it has a connotation of swelling. And I think the, the, the problem with the church is we've been infected. We've been bitten. And now we have a poison called pride. And we're swelling up with pride. And we're dying. Pride is killing us. So let's go back to the rich man here. i got to put this all together. The rich man goes to Jesus. He knelt before him. He dresses him as a great teacher. The man was very, very respectful. He really wanted to learn. He was honest. And in speaking to the rich man, Jesus explained, all you got to do, you lack one thing. Go out and sell all this stuff. Give it all to the poor, and everything will be okay. If you'll do that, he said, remember, what's he asking? What was the question? Do you remember what the rich young ruler asked? How to get to heaven. How do I become saved? He says, do something about your money. Uh-oh. You, you, God, you, you want money? No, you can have everything else, but do not touch my bank account. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. And he says, I want you to go, listen, he says, I want you to sell everything. Now, I want you to be very, very careful here. Who, who does the bless? Robert Morris does the blessed life. At one point, God told him to get rid of everything. House, cars, retirement, everything. And God did a mighty thing in his life. You better be sure it's God if you're going to give everything away. Because that's not one you want to miss the mark on. Now, just, just saying. There's a little bit of advice there. Had somebody went to church many, many years ago and said, God told me to give away my car. And they'd sit out on the road. Am I telling the truth? They'd sit out on the road waiting for somebody to pick them up. And for weeks and weeks and weeks, they missed church. Months and months, they missed church. I don't know. Was God in that? So, so he goes to him and says, sell it all. Give it away. Wait now. You, you mean your giving is a barometer to see if you're saved? Yep. Yes? Okay. It is part of Scripture, I believe. 
And Jesus was, listen to this, this is so important. Jesus wasn't saying the money or the possessions are evil. We know that. You've heard me preach on that often. But this man, who was a strict follower of the law, had his security in it, his wealth and his money. And in this conversation, listen, he wanted to know what? How to have eternal life. And here's his money got him everything. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't even. Is that what we do now? <laughs> Some of you know what it means. Some of you don't. That's right. Am I doing it right? <laughs> I know I'm not hip. I, I know Ethan's embarrassed. Right. Kylie, I'm not hip. Go ahead and say it. Go, go ahead and say it. I understand. But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> his money got him anything he wanted. He was rich. It didn't say he had a little bit of money. It didn't say he was middle class, upper. I mean, it said he was rich. So his money got him anything he wanted. And he's coming now to see how he can et uh, inherit eternal life. He's wanting to make a deal with Jesus. I want to hook up Jesus. What, what will it take? And he didn't understand the lesson. All right? You cannot buy salvation. You cannot buy peace. You cannot buy love. What you gave today is not going to get you any of that. Amen? Yeah. All right. We, we're clear now. All right. Money's not your answer. More money's not your answer. A lot of people say, if I, if I just had more money. Do you know there, uh, I forget the statistics. Somebody shout it out if you know. But people that win the lottery go broke like two and a half years later. And they're miserable people. Remember the man, man in West Virginia? Miserable. Just mi Miserable. $350 million in West Virginia won. He's got not a penny now. That's crazy to me. How do you blow through $350 million? <laughs> like, I'll help you. <laughs> Just give me $1 million and I'll figure it out. You know, Mike, like, I'll save, maybe invest, pay off some debt, you know, be frugal, give to the church. $350 million gone. That's crazy. Anyway, more money is not the answer. It's your dependency on God that matters. That's the whole root of this conversation. So, so, so we should never question when God asks us to give. God's going to take care of us. We talked about that earlier this morning, and we understand that. But, but sometimes pride gets in our way, whether it's giving of finances, giving of time, giving of love, patience, giving. You're always giving in this world. Of something but, but but pride keeps us from wanting to give that yeah, you should be patient with your spouse all the spouses say amen amen teaching her early amen yes but pride doesn't want to give it amen so here's a slide Dependency on God. Oh, I love this. This is just a thought I had yesterday. Dependency on God is a recognition that God will come through. God will come through. Won't, won't he, though? He, he'll always come through. So I thought about this conversation with the rich man, and everything is taking place, and Jesus says, go sell it all, and he walks away sad because he does not understand who he's talking to. He's talking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're talking to Jesus. We're talking to the Son of God. We're having a conversation with God. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The gold is mine. The silver is mine. Everything is God's. And he's talking to that one. And if he asks me to give it all up, I know he's going to come through for me. So gladly, where do I make the check? Jesus, who do I make it out to? Because i got to give it. Because it's my recognition that God will come through. This young man went away sorrowful, not because of the money, but because he did not have enough trust in God to come through for him. Too many people are self-reliant and they're prideful. I could give you so many examples in the Bible. But, but I want you to understand, pride says, I cannot trust God. Jesus to fix this to take care of this to do this and and I must rely on myself 
I got to fight for myself. I got to manage myself. I got to fix things myself. I can't rely on other people. That must be such a hard way to live. Heavy, to say the least. And, and something must have happened to him as a young man or whatever. Something maybe happened to you at some point to where you've been hurt, you've been let down, and, and you carry this thing around where, where you just have to, you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. And God says this. God says this. I'm, I'm almost done. We can go ahead and get ready for the music. Listen, listen to this. God says, come unto me. All that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Oh, rest. You ever sleep for like 10, 12 hours and you're not feeling restful? For some people, it doesn't matter if you sleep four hours or 14 hours. You, you remember when we... Uh, went on our uh, anniversary trip and uh, this was crazy um, we went to Italy it's amazing can't wait to go back someday we love to travel love Italian food and um, we were so we were so excited to get over there and just like man we're going to go man we're going to throw the bags down we're out the door let's go it's going to be so much fun it's going to be the best 10 days of our lives and it was it was amazing it was amazing and the craziest thing Doug happened when we got there first of all we couldn't figure out how to put the GPS in the rental car it took me an hour to figure that out us to figure that out cuz they they switch things around if you've ever been to Europe and they do things differently. They've got regions instead of cities, and then the city goes after the region and all this stuff. And so finally we get that. All right, good, cool. We drive to the Airbnb, get into the house. We're like, man, I'm tired. You tired? Yeah, I'm tired. Let, let's, just, let's just take a little nap. You remember this? We slept for over 14 hours. We didn't wake up. I didn't think it was that long. It was, it was long. Almost 17 hours. We were wiped out. I mean, before the trip, we were just running, doing everything. Church stuff, this stuff, that stuff. Da, 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 da. And we finally got it. We're like, yes, yes, we get to go. And got up, man, we felt so rested. Enjoyed the rest of the trip. It was wonderful. Some of you could rest for 24 hours. Sleep for, let me say, sleep for 24 hours. And you wouldn't feel rested. Because you got so much of this junk that you've not dealt with. Fair enough, fair enough. I've been there, done that. Trust me. Well, let, let, me, let me finish this and then we're going to pray. The man goes away and then Jesus turns to the disciples. Th this is so good. This is so good. Fits with everything we've been talking about the last two weeks. And then he turns to the disciples and he begins to talk to them. And, and we miss this. We think no one with money could ever go to heaven. That's, that's not what he's saying here. It's not what he's saying here. But he looks at them, and remember when he talks to them about it's tough for a rich man to go to heaven? Yeah, I, I guess if you rely on all that, but if you're faithful, you're going to go to heaven. If you're serving God, you have a right heart, sure. And, and then he says this statement, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for someone, let me put my translation and spin on it, someone that fully trusts only on their money and their wealth versus me. That's what he's saying there, right? So uh, I was looking this up, and sh show this next slide. Matthew Henry is a commentary, and <clears throat> there's a thing called uh, a wicked gate with a T on the end of it, not a D. And, and what it is, let me kind of get out of the way here. What, what it is is it's, it's this tiny door where they didn't always open the big door of these medieval cities. But they had the wicked gate, which was the small one. And he believes in that time what he was saying is a camel that's loaded down will not fit through the wicked gate. Because there's too much stuff there for them to get through. And I believe what God is saying is if you've got too much stuff, you're not going to get through to heaven. You've got to lay it down. And 
pride is something we need to lay down. Amen. Stand with me all over this place. I pray that this message has ministered to you and helped you. I know it's helped me. Because if you're not careful, you might not realize this. But look how God views pride. I don't, I don't have the scriptures put up there, but I want to read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, Proverbs 11, 2, Proverbs 16, 5. If you want these, I'll send them to you. You just call me today or text me or whatever. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And this is God. I hate pride. I hate arrogance and evil behavior and perverse speech. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 16.5 The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. A lot of people think that pride is an attitude, but it's a sin. Alright, that's what this whole thing comes down to, alright? We act sinful in our homes sometimes. No, we're not murdering someone. We're not doing something, but we're very prideful in sometimes how we treat people. We could be at work and be so prideful that it becomes sinful in our lives. And we have to be careful because, again, we think pride is an attitude, but it's really an action of sin that we need to deal with. Amen? And you will not get through the eye of the cam or the eye of the needle with all this junk in your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today would be a day that I draw closer to you. I pray today that I would destroy pride in my life. You hate it. You detest it. You, you, God, will not let it go unpunished. We must deal with our pride. Pride keeps us from becoming the man of God you want us to be. Pride keeps us from being the woman of God you want us to be. Pride keeps us from fulfilling our purpose and our calling in life. Pride will hide the withered hand and not show the messy stuff. I need some help in this place, God. Help us to be honest. Help us to show our real selves to you today to be transparent of all the things we struggle with, Lord. Help us. Search me, God. Search me, God. God, see if there's be any wicked, prideful way in me and help me. I repent in Jesus' name. Amen. This altar is open.